Islington, St. John's Road, Sadler's Wells Theatre, Exmouth Street and Coppice Row. The Dodger scudded at a rapid pace, directing Oliver to follow close at his heels. A dirtier or more wretched place he had never seen. The streets were very narrow and muddy, and the air was impregnated with filthy odours. There were a good many small shops, but the only stock in trade appeared to be heaps of children who were crawling in and out of the doors. The sole places that seemed to prosper amid the general blight of the place were the public houses. Covered ways and yards disclosed little knots of houses where drunken men and women were positively wallowing in filth. Oliver was just considering whether he hadn't better run away when the artful dodger, catching him by the arm, pushed open the door of a house and drawing him into the passage, closed it behind them. Oi! Now then, plummy and slime. Hello, dodger. Ah, oh, there's two of you. Who's the other one? A new pal. Where'd he come from? Greenland. He's faking upstairs. Yeah, he's sorting the wipes. Come on. This way, Oliver. It's too dark. Hold on to me coat. The stairs are tricky if you don't know them. One wrong step in your neck's as good as broken. Ha! <laughs> At the top of the stairs, Jack Dawkins threw open the door of a back room and drew Oliver in after him. The walls and ceiling of the room were perfectly black with age and dirt. There was a deal table before the fire, upon which were a candle stuck in a ginger beer bottle, two or three pewter pots, a loaf and butter, and a plate. In a frying pan, which was on the fire, some sausages were cooking. And standing over them, with a toasting fork in his hand, was a very old Jewish man, whose villainous-looking and repulsive face was obscured by a quantity of matted red hair. He was dressed in a greasy flannel gown, with his throat bare, and seemed to be dividing his attention between the frying pan and the clothes horse, over which a great number of silk handkerchiefs were hanging. Several rough beds made of old sacks were huddled side by side on the floor. Seated round the table were four or five boys, none older than the Dodger, smoking long clay pipes and drinking spirits with the air of middle-aged men. Dodger, my lad. Oh, who's this? My new friend, Oliver Twist. Oh, oh an honour, Mr Twist. <laughs> an honour indeed. <laughs> We're very glad to see you, Oliver. <laughs> very. Uh, Dodger, take off the pan with the sausages and draw a tub near the fire for Oliver. <laughs> take his cap, Johnny, to hang up, I mean. Yes, Fagan. Oh, Oliver. <laughs> You're staring at the pocket handkerchiefs, eh, my dear? Well, I... well there's a good many of them, aren't there? <laughs> we just put them out ready for the wash. <laughs> that's all we do, Oliver. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, make room at the table, boys. Scatter. There are enough sausages for all, especially for our new friend. <laughs> Hands out of his pockets, Charlie. <sighs> and put that bundle back where you found it, David. Yes, Fagin. Yeah, the first round of sausages are for you, my dear Oliver. And then, I want you to drink this. What is it? Hot gin and water. <laughs> yeah. Drink it down fast, my boy. <coughs> uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, you'll sleep well tonight, my dear. I promise you. And so he did. It was late the next morning when Oliver awoke from a sound, long sleep. There was no other person in the room but old Fagin, who was boiling some coffee in a saucepan. Although Oliver had roused himself from sleep, he was not thoroughly awake and did not stir. He drifted and only half saw Fagin step gently to the door, which the old man fastened. Fagin then drew forth from a trap in the floor a small box which he placed carefully on the table. 
His eyes glistened as he raised the lid and looked in. Dragging an old chair to the table, he sat down and took from it a magnificent gold watch, sparkling with jewels. Clever dogs. <laughs> Clever dogs. Staunch to the last. Oh, fine fellows. 